um, people tell you not to make mistakes. I have a different approach. I say make as many mistakes as possible, just don't make the same mistake. <laughs> and then I wow. put a caveat to that by before, um, make sure you do your research. And then if you add those two together, you're going to be successful. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching our podcast episode. The next one coming up is with Mr. Stu James. He is the founder of Influential Processes. Welcome, Mr. Stu. Thank you so much, Daniel, for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah, we met on the interwebs. As often, I meet amazing people looking you know, at different businesses and looking for uh, business leaders who have accomplished amazing things in their career. And yeah, your name came up in the process. So I just would like to know what, what is it you're doing today? Sure. So currently I'm running a marketing agency. And what we're doing here is we're providing lead generation for people that work in the financial sectors. Now, with that mm -hmm. being said, we're not isolated to just helping um, financial um, um, agencies and people working in that realm. We could help other local businesses, but that just tends to be our bread and butter and where most of our clients come from. So, so yeah. Fantastic. Lead generation, that's a really big thing. And uh, I'm quite familiar with this uh, area of work. Lead generation can, can be uh, like a very essential part of any B2B business, right? I'm, I mean, you're, Absolutely. you're, you're I mean, even B2C as well, but, uh, yeah, but in B2B, it's, uh, it's, it's essential to, to target the right people, to connect with the, work, uh, with the right people in the right industry, in the right location and so forth. And, and you guys have figured all that out. So that's a big deal. Absolutely. And you help your clients to find, your, your, to, to find their ideal clients by, by, doing, by, by creating these leads. And, and, and what you do with the leads? Uh, are you just passing them uh, over to your client or you also do some kind of engagement with those So leads? actually, we, we kind of consider ourselves like a marketing agency in a box for our clients. So mm. we handle the outreach, we handle mm -hmm. the nurturing, and then oh. we also handle the follow-up. And then we also Fantastic. provide um, daily updates, weekly updates, quarterly updates, and we're very transparent about where their marketing strategies is, if they're on track or if they need improvement. And we kind of treat ourselves like family. You know, we mm. keep m retain most of our clients. We don't have people mm -hmm. that are in rotation, which is very mm. rare for a lead generation company but we are mm. very selective on who we choose to <clears throat> uh, partner with. So that is a fantastic it. place yeah. to be in. Yeah. If you can choose your clients because your reputation is already so high up, so you can actually be picky and uh, you provide actual results for your clients. So you're doing the whole thing, like we call it CRM, right? So there's oh, yeah, a absolutely. customer relationship management. There's yep. a software platform, I'm guessing. Yes. And then there's a sequence of uh, emails or messages going up to, to, the, to those prospects, warming up phase. And, yep. then, uh, and then your client can engage with them via calls or anything. Yeah, based else on their preference. Do. Yep, we yeah. do the whole Fantastic. nine SMS, texts, and as well. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and you created this business. And uh, how, how long ago was it that you created to set up this business? Well, this business is actually, I started this new company just a few months ago, but we oh. were doing something very similar just 10 years ago in a different company. The reason why mm -hmm. I switched over my entity was to start afresh, start new branding. Um, initially, I, I had business partners that I'm no longer partnering with now, where mm -hmm. I'm a solo entity with at least five people on my payroll. And mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. figured it was better to do it this way because we'll be able to hold the branding to the company mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we could accept the clients we want to accept. That was mm -hmm. an issue that we had um, when we had multiple business partners. So I like yeah. the new direction that we're heading in now. So you are the you're the boss now. So you the don't boss. have to ask. <laughs> exactly. I like, I like that. Yeah. I like being the boss. I mean, it can be lonely sometimes i mean sometimes it's i i wish i had you know a buddy to you know to 
to have like to exchange ideas and to get some second opinion and all that which which can be super helpful if you have the right person as your partner but uh, if you don't it can go downhill a lot if yes. this partner is not the one who is actually supporting and and helping and if the communication doesn't work so yeah i can completely relate to your preference to be the single boss of your business <laughs> and just you know make the decisions you see fit fantastic Absolutely. which makes me even more curious about your story man um, i would love to meet 10 year old Stu and would like to hear what was on his mind. Where was he living? What was he doing? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So originally I'm from New York city inside of the heart oh. of, yeah, yeah. Born and raised. Um, I'm the youngest of four of my siblings. Um, we grew up, um, upper middle class. I, I really didn't want for anything. Um, Growing up, my mom was really sick. She battled, had bouts with cancer. So back then, I thought I was going to go into medical school because I had the initial preference of being able to go in the field to be able to support her, you know, mm -hmm. and help figure it out because I'm sure other people were in my um, situation. Um, as it so happens that um, I have my background in science, you know. Mm -hmm. um, more specifically, I have like a master's in neuroscience and oh, wow. biochemistry because oh. I was just a few steps away from signing the papers to go into medical school. And mm -hmm. I did some digging, went on the floor, saw a few things, did some shadowing with doctors and whatnot. And I was like, you know what, maybe this is not really the field for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So then it opens up the door. As, what do you do with a science degree, you know? So <laughs> naturally. Uh, science? <laughs> yeah, well, true, true. Well, well, here's what they don't tell you about science is I was working in a lab. And uh, and this is a hard conversation to have, but it's, it's a realistic conversation. Um, I was considered a third level doctorate student. And I was working, I was making at least... 45,000 a year. And when people hear that coming from like a science major, that's how do you live on that in New York City? You know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it's kind of like, what do you use this degree with? So I, I went into the industry, which paid me a little bit more, but it was still such a grind, you know? And working with some of like my managers and whatnot, they kind of like want to keep you in that kind of lower rung or at least the management I was under. And they made a comment to me like, oh, you will never be a manager one day. So I said mm -hmm. to myself from that point on that, you know what, I'm going to open up my business. You know what I mean? And this way I could control something, you know, and then mm -hmm. I'll let the market dictate if I had the skill set to survive or sink. And I did mm -hmm. just that. I pulled all the money and resources I had into a company. The company that I formed back then was science related. And I was, it was more like um, I was a consultant helping inside of like the science realm. And mm -hmm. I realized I was able to make money doing that. However, I still did not quite feel satisfied. So I had to backtrack it a little bit and figure out what is it do, who do I want to help? What kind of services I want to provide? Now, a little bit about me is I'm, I love to give to the community. I love to give back um, and support, and I like to see my community grow. And it just so happens that I'm really good with computers. So I'm like, how do I make use of this? And I did a lot of affiliate marketing and stuff like that. So I had a mentor that said, why don't you help local businesses get more business using some of these skill sets? This is back in the days when YouTube wasn't really what it was, and Google didn't even have like adsware and stuff like that. And I started to play with it, and I realized, you know what? I could really help people out. I helped out, uh, I believe it was a dry cleaning <laughs> company, and he paid me mm -hmm. like 500 bucks. And I was like, hmm. wow, this kind of works. This kind of works. When was that? What, what year was that? This was back in 2012. Hmm. So, All right. so I go back. Ten years ago, you know, well, 12, yeah. 11. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, and I've only grown since then because, you know, I've learned a lot about um, being an entrepreneur. You start to wear many hats. And I mm-hmm. found myself kind of like building it while I fly it, you know, mm-hmm. handling, um, generating leads, nurturing it, following up, payroll, handling other people that's a part of the group maintaining consistency, being able to track um, performances and just continue to grow from there. And I, I realized there's a lot of stuff that I had I was not privy to until I began working for myself, <laughs> you know? So mm-hmm. it lends itself to, um, I was able to grow the business, you know? Um, I hit my six figures with Whoa. that company and I even hit seven figures while I was with that company before I did to dissolve it. And we're hoping for the same thing to, with this new company. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. So you, you had the courage to just walk away from the corporate world, which didn't seem to give you the opportunity you were looking for and the freedom and just start your own company. And I mean, you have proven like real entrepreneurial spirit right there, because uh, mm. I think that's what drives us all who kind of, you know, skip this uh, safety of corporate world. And at the same time, face the uncertainty of starting your own business because you have no idea what's coming your way. And you don't know if it's going to work or not. You don't know if you're going to get make money or not. But you took you took this uh, jump into the unknown, and it worked really well. So, congratulations, man! Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I, I was fortunate, and I did it in kind of like a smarter manner. Some people just dive right in and get to it, but I had seed money, seeing how I was working a nine to five, so I had that safety net of if it wasn't going to fail, or at least I had the money to proceed with my business. So I was Mm -hmm. able to like learn as I grow, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I had that fortune. Yeah, I think that's a very important point. Yeah, 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 yeah. to to have this kind of safety net again, uh, to have some backup is extremely smart. uh, And learning as we go, I think is just essential in any entrepreneurial journey, because there's, you know, there's no degree, there's no stamp, like now, you know, it all. And now you just have to apply it. There's always challenges and always new things we need to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then how did, how did you continue from there? So yeah, then uh, you left uh, or closed your first company. Yes. Yes. So just some creative differences with some of, um, the partners that I was involved with, I more or less want to help the smaller man grow more or less mm-hmm. than just pick on high ticket clients that really could navigate the market without us, you know, if they found proper mm-hmm. guidance. So mm-hmm. I, I figured I took on um, a risk on opening it up by myself. And the reason why it's a risk is not so much that I didn't know what I was doing, but it was, can I, was this model sustainable? Because now Mm -hmm. I'm working with clients that had a smaller budget and it's not that I need to convince them that marketing is the key, but if they do not invest in some kind of marketing service, they're not going to grow. It's rather they do it themselves or they outsource it to somebody that cares and generally is going to look out the best interest for their company, you know, Mm -hmm. and I'm Mm -hmm. very transparent with my clients about what we can do. And we don't accept anybody that we feel as though we're not going to give them a good return of investment. Mm -hmm. So what they get with us is complete transparency and they get a family for life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that approach. Yeah. I love this, uh, where you're being transparent, where being honest and where you're not just chasing the money, but you actually Mm -hmm. want to help businesses to grow. Yeah, I can completely relate to that. It's so much more fulfilling Mm -hmm. to see a business grow with your help and become like, uh, yeah, like a partner for them rather than, you know, just throwing some services at them. 
and, and charge as long as you can. And then when they figure out that these services are useless, uh, yeah, then then they quit. And but uh, it can be very, yeah, that's a very frustrating scenario we all want to avoid. So as an Absolutely. agency, we want to see our clients succeed and thrive uh, and uh, yeah, and, and make it a no-brainer, you know, to pay our monthly fees because they see the ROI. Absolutely, absolutely. And I don't know if you've been caught in this scenario, but on our way from building what we now have, we've worked with tons of different vendors and companies, and I realized that their services and what they promised was rather lukewarm at best. Mm -hmm. So we were like, we could absolutely do better than this, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it all starts from like proper, you know, vetting the, our, mm -hmm. our, our, our ideal client and making sure that we do our market research properly. And we mm -hmm. can always promise a, re, a decent return on the investment, so. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. So, um, and, and this is what you're doing right now. So you are right now at, in, in this running your business, having a, a team around you to support you, having Absolutely. a certain amount of clients. And I'm guessing that you enjoy what you're doing right now. So Absolutely. Your, Absolutely. Your, your endeavor and, and your courage to take on this journey definitely paid off for you. Absolutely. And we also do a few other things. So this marketing is what is our bread and butter. But what I do is I do consulting for our clients as well, as mm -hmm. well as um, we're planning on putting out some digital products about mm -hmm. how we execute our um, system. So if mm -hmm. they choose to run or exercise just a portion of our campaigns, we will take them through A through Z through like, um, video tutorials pdfs and audios mm. so oh, so yeah so you have educational material available as well absolutely so absolutely and if okay. they're a part of our um high ticket program then they're in what we consider a mastermind um group mm. which we actually show this is what we're doing in our business this is how mm. we're implementing it for our clients and it's mm -hmm. always evolving because, you know, the nature of social media platforms always changing algorithm updates and everything. So we stay mm -hmm. ahead of the curve. We talk about conventions, marketing conventions, all the networking we, we're doing. So it's a lot of great information mm -hmm. if they attend those sessions and it's available mm -hmm. to them if they're a part of um, taking on our service. Mm -hmm. So they, they can choose if they want to show up or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is very cool yeah so mastermind yeah I'm, I'm a big fan of masterminds yeah i'm i'm also part of at least one mastermind and i think it can be so helpful to you know have this smart people in the to maybe also to not be the smartest in the room they say if you're the smartest in the room you're in the wrong room <laughs> so have these other smart people around us who can inspire us and who can share the experience and who can help us out when we're facing some roadblocks. I think that's that's a great thing to have. I agree. Fantastic, man. Well, uh, I think your clients are very lucky people. So uh, I can tell that, you know, you're such an uh, humble and honest and, and contributing person. So it's, uh, I guess... Congratulations to your clients Thank you. and Thank you. <laughs> they must be very lucky to have you to help them grow. Thank Fantastic. Um, so uh, getting to the wisdom part, you know, um, mm -hmm. I always like to learn from successful people like yourself, hear how they navigated their path and their challenges and uh, what are the key takeaways they have learned along the way and what it is you would recommend to someone who is just about to start off on the entrepreneurial journey? What do you think are the most important things to know? Absolutely, absolutely. So once upon a time during my, um, when I was working the nine to five, I was a process engineer. And what they always tell you to do is reverse engineer your success because you may go into a new market, a new vertical, 
how do you know what's really going to work, you know? Mm -hmm. So then you would have to model somebody before you could build it yourself, you know? So having mm -hmm. the proper mentorship and guidance along the way will totally shorten the pains and the hiccups and the growing pains that are associated with doing it yourself. And what I tell people, as well as I tell family and friends, is um, people tell you not to make mistakes. I have a different approach. I say make as many mistakes as possible, just don't make the same mistake. <laughs> and then I wow. put a caveat to that by before, um, make sure you do your research. And then if you add those two together, you're going to be successful. Wow. That is that is huge, man. That is that is really great advice. So actually asking people to make mistakes, I think that is a very unusual but but very smart way to go about it. Yes, I, I also agree that we have all this fear of failure and making mistakes and we are used to get punished for making mistakes mm -hmm. like right. We all grow up with this. You cannot make a mistake. There's always mm -hmm. like pain and punishment on the other side. But but yeah, you're completely right. I think entrepreneurship and growing a business, there's no way to avoid mistakes. You have to, you have to make this. But you need the courage and this, the wisdom to learn from your mistakes and to move on. And and yeah, having a mentor on your side will definitely shorten this process and make it less painful. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, Fantastic. it always yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. No, and, and it, it always benefits to have like a centerpiece skill set that you're going to build from, you know. In, in my mm -hmm. case, uh, I'm a process engineer, so I could reverse engineer what I want the end product to look like, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. be prepared to like pick on new skills as you begin mm -hmm. your entrepreneurial journey. And always continue to read and grow and to learn. Again, yeah, there are yeah, there are two more nuggets of wisdom here. Yeah, continuous learning and growing and reading. And beginning with the end in mind, which the process engineer has learned in kind of in school, I think that's another very useful approach. You know, um, that it's it's actually a quote from a, one of my favorite books, The Seven Habits of Highly influential people i think cool. yeah the seven yeah seven habits and and one of these seven habits is actually to to reverse engineer yeah to begin with the end in mind to look at you know where i'm you know what is it i'm looking for what is this ideal scenario i'm trying to achieve here and then like reverse engineer the process i think that's another very smart way to achieve your goals rather than you know just uh, uh just looking in the dark and just taking random ways and paths, which may go some completely different way. Oh, reverse absolutely. engineering. Yes, man. Learn, reverse engineer, get a mentor. Absolutely. That would be my quick summary <laughs> of your advice here. Fantastic. Anything else you would like to share, Mr. Stu? Uh, thank you so much, Daniel, for this. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so it was an amazing time with you, Stuart. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure uh, whoever is still listening had an inspiring uh, podcast to hear, and I'm sure they would, uh, some of them would like to get in touch with you. So uh, any contact information, I will make sure it will be available under this video or under this podcast. Uh, and uh, for now, I would say thank you so much. Uh, I hope we can stay in touch and uh, support each other on our paths as entrepreneurs. Absolutely. If there's anything I could help you with, Daniel, don't hesitate to reach out, brother. I appreciate that, man. I will. Thank you so much, man. All right. Take care.